There are five ways no code is misleading people. And if you don't understand these things, it could really impact your own odds of being able to build and launch your app. One of the misconceptions about no code is that because you're not coding, you can pretty much just drag and drop your way to a successful app overnight. Now, unfortunately, that's just not true, primarily because in order to build a fully functioning custom app, you can't drag and drop your way to that in the first place. Yeah, maybe you can drag and drop your way to the framework of your app, but at the end of the day, in order to build an app with no code tools, you're still programming. You're just doing it in a visual way. That means there's still a lot of development methodology involved to build the custom functionality of your app. So yes, there will be some dragging and dropping, but there's a lot more to it than that. Now, you could potentially build an app overnight, but the only instances where I've ever seen that be successful is when the person doing that has been honing their development skills for a decade, maybe. And they are, in that instance, still going to be building a pretty slimmed down scope of an app. So if you see people talking about dragging and dropping or, or building an app overnight, make sure you're considering it with that context. Another misconception about no code is this. It's easy to think that because you're using no code tools that you can pretty much just bypass the need for development skills altogether. So essentially you can just come onto the no code platform of choice and kind of start piecing together an app in a way that's intuitive to you. But unfortunately that comes with a lot of issues. Yes, technically you could come onto a platform like Bubble, for example, and take your time just figuring out how to piece some things together, but that's going to, number one, take a really long time, and number two, it's going to lead to an app that doesn't perform and doesn't scale. So if you want to build an app for your existing business or to launch a new business, you need to make sure that yes, you're learning how to correctly use the no code tools and the platform that you've chosen, but that you're also taking the time to build development skills, learn the best practices, learn the methodology for building apps that will perform and scale because unless you do that, you're probably not going to reach the goals that you have for your own app. And to kind of send that home, because it can sound a little vague until you've really gotten deep into the development process with your own app, there are always 10 different ways to achieve any one outcome with development. But the thing is, nine of those ways are not going to be right for you and your app and your use case and your situation. And so, yes, you can sort of figure things out on your own, but there is a very high likelihood that they're not going to be the right things, even though they might seem like it at the time. But once you put your app under a load, once it starts being used, that's when these issues will really start to pop up. And that is when having an actual development skill set will really help you in the long run. Here's another really big misconception I see that misleads people as they first step into the no code space. There are a lot of templates available to help you build your no code app. And the idea is pretty straightforward. You buy a template, which has the base functionality in place for you, and you simply customize it however you want. And a lot of people who are brand new, they, they do that. They purchase a template and then once they get their hands on it, they, they realize the reality. And the reality is in order to truly customize a template, you have to learn all of the things that would really be required to build the template in the first place. To customize it, you have to understand it. You have to understand what's going on behind the scenes. And so if you're taking the time to understand and learn that, then why really start with a template? Yes, a template can be helpful as a learning tool, but 
if you're approaching it with that that mindset or that perspective of I'm going to buy a template to speed up my development and help me bypass all the learning, I unfortunately just never see it working out that way. Another thing that's pretty misleading for people who are first stepping into the no-code space is similar to what we just talked about with the templates. It's pretty common to think that you can outsource the development of your app initially, but then take over it on the other side so that you don't have to pay developers an ongoing fee to manage and maintain the app for its lifetime. And this can sound pretty good in theory. And maybe your plan is to actually learn how to use the no-code tools. For example, maybe you are having someone build your app on Bubble, and at the same time, you're learning how to use Bubble in preparation for taking over that app. That could be a really big time saver. And again, this is really good in theory, but it doesn't ever play out that way, unfortunately, because the reality is every developer has their own style. They build apps in their own way, and they of course have varying knowledge levels and skill sets. But if you are trying to take over an app that was built by someone else, not only are you going to need to understand how to use the no-code platform, of course, but you're also gonna have to understand how that particular person built the app. Otherwise, you're really going to struggle, and, and that's just a hard thing to make work. What will probably end up happening is you'll spend more time trying to figure out and rework and rebuild things than it would have taken you to just build the app on your own in the first place. Another misconception about no code is pretty much the complete opposite of what we just talked about with the outsource and then take over approach. One of the paths people take with their apps is to build as much of their first version as they can on their own, just kind of figuring things out along the way. And then their plan is to outsource the rest of development after they've sort of reached their own limit. Now, the idea here is to save money, but unfortunately what ends up happening is there's just a misunderstanding of how much work and learning is really required to build that first version or even first kind of portion of the app in the first place. So development ends up taking a really long time. And then after that, unfortunately, whoever they try to hire is almost guaranteed to want to rebuild the initial version of the app themselves. Because number one, there aren't going to be very many people who will build on top of what is potentially a shaky app, but most people who are taking over an app will want to have built the, the first version themselves just so that it can be built in their development style in a way that they understand and also in a way that they think is best. Now, there is a way this scenario can actually play out really positively, but it's in a very particular situation. So we help our own clients build the pilot version of their apps. And for some of them, their plan from the very start is to build their pilot app with us so that they can have control over it and actually understand what's going on. But their intent on the other side is to launch the app and then start bringing on maybe junior developers, for example, to maintain it while they themselves shift their focus toward the business side of things. Now, taking this approach, can work really well because it can save money initially. For example, if they want to launch their app, the one that they've built themselves, to ensure they have the market fit they thought they would have before actually bringing on a team, that can be a very economically smart way to approach development. But again, this is a very intentional way of approaching the development of their app. So it's not quite the same, um, just kind of figure out what you can and then outsource approach that we talked about, but it is sort of a version of it. So unfortunately, the term no code can be pretty misleading. It can be easy to think that no code means no skills or work or time or strategy required. 
And while no code does provide massive, massive benefits, it's not a magic bullet. And the more you understand that going into it, the more successful you're gonna be with your app. Now, fortunately, there are different frameworks and strategies to help you build your no-code app as easily and correctly as possible. And if you want more of those, head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop to join in on our scalable apps workshop, which is gonna guide you by the hand through all the next steps you need to take to be successful with your own app. We'll hope to see you there next. And in the meantime, I hope this was helpful. Thank you.